Good morning. Good morning. I love these short council meetings. Although well, it's always funny when the uh, council member comments are longer than the, the council meeting. What I've tried to do uh, as, as mayor is to not ever sneak up on anybody about major policy initiatives. Say what I intend to do, and as we move forward, say what we plan to do, and come back and say what we are doing, and then we're lucky, and we get back, we get to a point where we say what we've done. Two years ago, I announced that I intended to move the needle on homelessness in the city of Houston, and uh, we've come back and said what we intended to do. Came back and we, we laid out our what we planned to do. Now I'm in that third phase. We're coming back and saying this is a really good time to look and say what we have done so far. Uh, I'm proud to announce that through our initiative we have uh, successfully placed more than 1,400 chronically homeless and at-risk individuals into safe and stable permanent supportive housing. In fact, uh, 1,402 chronically homeless individuals into safe and stable permanent supportive housing. To help us house even more individuals as we go forward, we learned a lot through this process and we have now developed a coordinated placement system. We had a, I won't say chaotic, but we had a fragmented system where each agency was responsible for their own placements and individuals could easily get uh, lost in the cracks. Now we have a real-time electronic database uh, similar to a travel reservation website like uh, Expedia or Priceline. Uh, the website or the database is used by trained housing navigators and it's based on an individual, homeless individual's information and, and needs. Remember when we went out <laughs> last year and did a number of individual interviews with chronically homeless men and women on the streets of Houston. We had to get past the way our system was, which talked about the homeless, and get to the point where we could say, uh, this is about John Smith or Jane Rogers. It's not about the homeless, because John Smith has particular needs. He needs a particular type of social service in order to meet those needs. So now our system based on that individual's needs, can recommend an appropriate type of housing, shows which housing communities the individual qualifies for, shows real-time availability of beds for the homeless, and uh, actually on-site can reserve uh, a bed. The system was successfully beta tested earlier this year and uh, officially went live yesterday at the Beacon downtown and uh, will be expanded to other service providers and street out outreach teams within the next few months. Also to update you, that's a real, it's a goal achieved, but it's a, a tool to help us achieve other goals. One of the other tools to help us achieve other goals that I created was a housing leadership team chaired by Pam Gardner and consisting of some of our city's uh, top business, religious, and philanthropic leaders. Not a team of groups that are engaged in providing services to the homeless, which the Coalition of the, Ho Coalition of the Homeless is, but individuals who are either interested personally in the issue or uh, because of the role they have in the community. I, I appreciate Pam Gardner chairing, but to have uh, Bob Urey representing downtown, but also, for example, uh, Cardinal Leonardo, who comes personally to engage on this issue. It, it gives us a, a broad-based community perspective and access to uh, other community resources. And I thank them for what they've contributed so far and will continue to contribute on this issue. Through all of the work we've been doing over the last two years, We have had some successes, and I mentioned the 1,400 chronically homeless individuals that we've housed, but we also have some preliminary numbers on our point-in-time homeless count. I don't have the final numbers 
for the entire city. Uh, but I can safely say that the numbers look really, really good. I can also right. safely say that the preliminary numbers we have for downtown <laughs> show that we have decreased the number of uh, uh, chronically homeless individuals living on the streets of downtown Houston by 30% in just one year. And in fact, over the past two years, our uh, population of chronically homeless individuals in the downtown area has been decreased by 50%. Uh, at the same time we have housed these more than 1,400 chronically homeless individuals, we've also seen a substantial decline in our downtown street trailing or dwelling chronically homeless population. It's a good time for me to, to step back and I'm going to go in the weeds with you guys because this is something that I really care a lot about. Chronically homeless individuals, people who are on the street for long periods of time or on and off the street over a significant amount of time, as opposed to someone who suddenly becomes homeless, we, can, we grab them, we, they, they, they take advantage of the shelter, and they um, move back into the mainstream if we can stabilize them quickly. Chronically homeless individuals have had problems that have been allowed to increase over time. And the longer someone stays on the street, uh, the, the harder it is to get them stabilized and, and, and back into, integrated back into society. So there are two distinct populations. <coughs> Our focus is on the chronically homeless. And it's not about, we're gonna build more shelters for the homeless. No, I don't need more shelters. I need permanent supportive housing so that the chronically homeless have the wraparound services they need to stay, go to housing, stay in housing, I do not want to do anything that makes it easier for someone to stay on the street than to be in a, a safe, uh, humane environment. And uh, I'm just so excited that we're on the right path. We will be formally rolling out all the results from our point in time homeless count uh, in a couple of weeks, but it was a good time to share the good news. I am joined by Marilyn Brown from the Coalition for the Homeless. For the homeless. And Mandy Chapman Simple, who's my special advisor on homelessness. They are the, the folks who are uh, making a difference in uh, lives in the community. I'm very excited about the progress we've made, and we're going to continue to make progress. Any questions about this issue? Mayor, what's the profile of the chronically homeless as you profile, um, as you stated? Are they single women with children, or are they um, just um, um, people who've been on the street for a long time and they're single men? Or what, what is that profile? Probably 85% of the chronically homeless are men. Uh, probably half have substance abuse or uh, mental health issues. Uh, they also tend to have either ongoing health issues or health issues that have been uh, exacerbated by long-term life <coughs> on the streets. And so they're in and out of our uh, public health facilities, particularly our emergency room facilities, which is a huge uh, drain on resources. So it's not just a matter of someone has a mental health issue or substance abuse issue. It's not just about, oh, we're going to find you a place to live. It's, a, it's we will find you a place to live and get you stabilized, but we're also going to work with you to, to tackle your other issues. And, and that is the, the critical piece of, of what we're providing. But it's also about making sure that we see each of these people as individuals and that we now have a system and this, is, this has been a frustration of mine, and I'm so glad we're announcing the, the opening of this new tracking system, that with all the technology we have, we couldn't, we couldn't follow one homeless person as they went through the, the city of Houston. It's, it's just been crazy. Mark, can you talk a little bit more about that and put it in perspective of, for the user of this system, how has that changed the experience? I'm going to... Uh, Ask either Marilyn or Mandy to come forward and talk about, uh, and of course, the, there have been changes to the system because of our new coordinated efforts, but the big piece yesterday was the new online system, and uh, I know that uh, Mandy can talk about uh, some of the people that have been placed with this new 